Hello, a blessed day everyone. Today we're going to discuss on African literature. So class, you are expected to describe the notable literary genres contributed by African writers. Identify the distinguishing features of notable African chants, poems, folk tales, and short stories. List down notable literary genres of African writers as well. Is there anyone who knows about African literature? Or you have read about African literature before? What do you think is African literature? African literature is defined as a literary works created by the authors living in countries on the African continent, mainly lying south of the Sahara. In African literature, the traditions of numerous African peoples and the interwoven historical development of the cultural traditions of Europe, Asia, India, and America are intertwined. Literature of African countries is distinguished by a variety of genres that are constantly evolving and mutating. What is a literary genre? A literary genre is a category of literary composition. Genres may be defined by or even, as in the case of fiction, length. The distinctions between genres and categories are flexible and loosely defined, often with subgroups. So class, what are the examples of literary genres? We have here examples of literary genres. Chant and poem. So what is a chant? A chant is a repeated rhythmic phrase, typically one shouted or sung in unison by a crowd. A chant tends to be two to four lines repeated over and over. A chant is quick, short, and makes a point. What makes a chant? Chants tend to focus on either offensive or defensive moves. The best times to use a chant include First, while on the sideline during plays. Second, to encourage your team to be defensive, take the ball back or make a basket or goal. Third, during short timeouts and quick breaks that call for something from the cheerleaders but might not allow enough time for a full-blown cheer. And finally, in Africa, chants are also used during sacred prayers and traditions. Would you like to listen to an example of an African chant? Very good. I have here an example of an African chant titled Africa by Toto Song. This is what you're going to do. I want you to listen very closely. Are you all ready? Africa by Toto Song I hear the drums echoing tonight, but she hears only whispers of some quiet conversation. She's coming in 12.30 flight. The moonlight wings reflect the stars that guide me towards salvation. I stopped an old man along the way, hoping to find some long-forgotten words or ancient melodies. He turned to me as if to say, Harry boy, it's waiting there for you. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There is nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do. I bless the rains down in Africa. Gonna take some time to do the things we never had. The wild dogs cry out in the night as they grow restless longing for some solitary company. 
I know that I must do what's right. As sure as Kalimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti, I seek to cure what's deep inside. This time, we have another literary genre, a poem. Do you know what a poem is? A poem is a collection of spoken or written words that express ideas or emotions in a powerfully vivid and imaginative verse. A poem is comprised of a particular rhythmic and metrical pattern. A poem's main function is to convey an idea or emotion in beautiful language. It paints a picture of what the poet feels about a thing, person, idea, concept, or even an emotion. So now, do you know already the difference between a chant and a poem? Very good! This time, would you like to listen to an example of a poem? I have here an example of an African poem titled, I am an African child. I am an African child by Echo Magred. I am an African child born with a skin the color of chocolate, bright, brilliant and articulate, strong and bold I am gifted. Talented enough to be the best. I am an African child, often the target of pity. My future is not confined to charity. Give me the gift of a lifetime. Give me a dream, a door of opportunity. I will thrive. I am an African child. Do not hide my fault. Show me my wrong. I am like any other. Teach me to dream and I will become. I am an African child. So there you have it, the examples of African chant and an African poem. How did you find them? What have you observed? What makes them different from one another? Where does the difference lie? Alright, since we're done with the example of African chant and African poem, let's move on to some notable writers of Africa. I want you to take down notes. So let's begin. In a continent as ethnically and culturally diverse as Africa, it comes as no surprise that the literature has emerged from it be equally diverse and multifaceted, dealing with a range of social and cultural issues from women's rights and feminism to post-war and post-colonial identity. Here are some of Africa's best contemporary writers. Number one, Chinua Achibe, one of the world's most widely recognized and praised writers. Achibe wrote some of the most extraordinary works of the 20th century. His most famous novel, Things Fall Apart in 1958, is a devastating depiction of the clash between traditional tribal values and the effects of colonial rule, as well as the tension between masculinity and femininity in highly patriarchal societies. Number two, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, born in Nigeria in 1977. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is part of the new generation of African writers taking the literary world by storm. Adichie's works are primarily character-driven, interweaving the background of her native Nigeria 
and social and political events. And lastly, we have Nadine Gordimer. Her works powerfully explore social, moral, and racial issues in a South Africa under apartheid rule. Gordimer's most famous and controversial works were banned from South Africa for daring to speak out against the oppressive governmental structures of the time. So there you are, class, the most notable writers of Africa. This time, let us continue with the self-assessment question. So this is what you're going to do for the self-assessment question number one. I want you to read with me and answer each question carefully. Choose only the letter of your best answer. So are you all set? Let us start. Number one. What is mostly interwoven in African literature? A. Culture and traditions. B. Food and cuisine. C. Arts and dances. D. Technology. What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter A. Culture and traditions. Number two. All are true about chance except A. It is mostly repeated B. It is often long C. It is quick and fast D. It is sung in unison What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter B. It is often long Lastly, number three, which of the following is not a characteristic of a song? A. It can be written or spoken. B. It often follows measure and rhyme. C. It is vivid and imaginative. D. It is always short in nature. What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter D. It is always short in nature. Very good. So there you are for SAQ1. For self-assessment question number two, Class is what you're going to do. From the given definition, make a Venn diagram on the difference of a poem from a chant. You may write this on a paper. So this is the answer for the self-assessment question number two. Poem and chant are both described as a composition of words with similar nature. The major difference between them is that a chant is set to music while a poem is not. It is comprised of a particular rhythmic and metrical pattern instead. While a chant, it is a repeated rhythmic phrase, typically one shouted or sung in unison by a crowd. A chant tends to be two to four lines repeated over and over. It is quick and makes a point. Before we will end up with our lesson today, I want you to keep this in mind. Remember that chants tend to be easy to remember, so encourage the audience to get involved as well. You can do this by having one cheerleader motion them to join in with cards or by placing a few students in the stands to encourage other fans to chant along. While for poems, poets grab the attention of the audience through the use of vivid imagery, emotional shades, and other rhetorical devices. However, the supreme function of a poem is to transform imagery and words into verse form to touch the hearts and minds of the readers. They can easily arouse the sentiments of their readers through versification. In addition, poets evoke imaginative awareness about things by using a specific diction, sound, and rhythm.
Let's see how much have you learned today. So this is what you're going to do, class. Identify each of the following text, whether it is a poem or a chant. Simply write your answer on your paper. Are you ready? Number one. Just the same, I want you to read with me. To the children we call our future, who have no shoes to put on their feet, who have barely any food to eat, who believe in some unreal hope, but still dare to dream, wild and free. Cheers! To the folks who stand by the wayside, who search high and low for world unknown, will they ever find a place called home? Probably, probably not. We wait, chin chin. A lesson we learned. You took everything and yet left so much. You left us hanging. Do we regret the departure? We still take a long walk of shame until we finally snap. Was ill. All who made the attempt to restore some peace to chaos, to restore hope to despair, you got caught in the web of toils and sacrifice to defy all odds of a better life for everyone. Now a toast to all who fought, to those who are still fighting, to those who marry in the war, to those who take advantage of the frail, to the injustice done to us, to the justice we will fight for, bottoms up. Bottoms Up by Aman Wama. What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is point. Very good. Let's move on. Number two. Don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry and let anyone see your mouth. There is gold in your mouth. Don't cry and let anyone see your mouth. An English translation of Kafuga, Cradle Song, Ghana, West Africa. What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is chant. Very good. Number three. Walking through Africa, what do I see? I can see Inyoka looking at me. Walking through Africa, what do I see? I can see Ufuru looking at me. Walking through Africa, what do I see? I can see Inlovu looking at me. Walking through Africa, what do I see? I can see Ikozi looking at me. Walking through Africa, what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is chant. Job well done. Number four. The giraffe and the elephant went for a walk. They stopped in some shade and started to talk. I wish it would rain, said the giraffe with a sigh. I'm tired of watching the clouds pass us by. Yes, said the elephant. Where is the rain? I wish I could eat fresh green leaves again. The sun is so hot and the land is so dry. When will the rain fall from the sky? Later in the day, the sky turned gray. The flying ants flew out to say, The rain is coming. We smell it in the air. And in the distance, thunder we hear. The giraffe and the elephant Look up at the sky and heard the black eagle give forth his cry. The rain has come. The rivers will flow. The dry season is over. Now the green grass will grow. Where is the rain? What do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is chant. Congratulations!